What's up, Strong Side Nation? Mitchell Black here. I'm the founder of Strong Side and I'm the author of Nutrition Finances. Um, today I want to talk to you about cholesterol, all right? So that's a pretty big nutrition topic. And uh, look, here's the deal with this nutrition or uh, this YouTube channel is that I'm going to give you the right information. Everything that we give you at Strong Side is going to be the right information. You, I'm not saying that you're not educated, but I'm saying that a lot of people don't possess the right information. You know, when you're working really, really hard to reach your goals and you're trying as hard as you can to be successful, but you're never there. You work really hard, but you don't lose the weight. You try to diet, but your blood panels don't change. Um, you try to make nutrition changes, but your cholesterol didn't move. You know, whatever. Is it your fault or is it that you just have the wrong information? because other people are doing it, so do you have the wrong information? And that's what I wanna show you. This YouTube channel is 100% dedicated to you being successful, giving you the right information to be successful, all right? And by success, we're saying closing the gap on where you're at and your potential so you can reach the goals that you wanna reach. So today, I'm gonna to talk to you about cholesterol, all right? I got a bunch of markers here to kinda of map this thing out for you. All right, look, here's the deal. So. You have several types of cholesterol. A lot of people don't realize how many types they have. You have a lot. This isn't all of them, but you have HDL, you have LDL, you have VLDL, you have ILDL. Like, look, I'm just going to stop at a few, but you have a lot, okay? Most people only know these two, HDL and VLDL. Or I'm sorry, LDL. HDL and LDL. And that's really what we're going to spend time talking about today to make sure that you understand what this stuff is and how to control it, all right? So first off, let's just talk about it. Okay, so what what is cholesterol, okay? Think of it this way, I'm gonna oversimplify it for you. I'm gonna give you the right information as simple as possible. So cholesterol is used in every single cell in your body. Cholesterol is made in your liver and every cell in your body uses it. So let's just stop right there. Your body would not make something that killed itself. That's ridiculous. It wouldn't. So like your body's not going to make something to instinctually commit suicide. That's ridiculous, all right? Meaning that just because you eat cholesterol doesn't mean your cholesterol is going to go up. That's not what that means. Just because you take in an egg does not mean your cholesterol is going to go through the roof. So let's break this down. All right, I said there's several types of cholesterol. I said there's HDL, there's LDL, VLDL, ILDL. Like just look, we're going to talk about HDL and LDL. But what I want to point out is that all of these have a DL at the end of it. All right. So if you have HDL, there is a D and there's an L at the end of every single type of cholesterol. What does that mean? Density lipoprotein. Density lipoprotein. High density lipoprotein, low density lipoprotein, very low density lipoprotein, stuff like that, all right? So what is that? A lipoprotein is part lipid and part protein. All right, so it's really what we're just talking about is what kind of compound we're making in that cholesterol. That's all that means, okay? So it's not that the cholesterol is good or bad. It's what's in the cholesterol is good or bad. So now that we kind of know, okay, I have all these different types of cholesterol and they're all density lipoproteins, which is just a... It's a, basically a, a lipid and a protein for that bond. It's what's in the cholesterol that matters. Okay, so what does cholesterol do? Like, why, why does your body make it? Why d is it used in every cell in your body? Okay, well, that's what we need to know first. You have arteries, right? So you have all these arteries that go through your body. Let's just pretend that this is an artery, top and bottom, and you would have blood flow that goes through. That's how you're transporting nutrients throughout your body, right? Anytime that you do anything that causes stress to your body, whether that's exercise, um, maybe, dude, if you won the lottery, you would have stress on your body, right? Like good stress, bad stress, whatever. You're going to break down these arteries, and that's completely normal, okay? You need good stress. If you go exercise, like I said, if you get stressed out, you know, if you spill a glass of red wine on your white carpet and you get all mad, you know, whatever, your arteries are going to break down, okay? And you're going to get like, like, let's just say we have a little crack right there in your artery. Your body is then going to send out LDL cholesterol, all right? So you get a crack in your body, and your body goes, oh, no, we have to fix these cracks in the artery wall. Let's send out 
LDL cholesterol to fix the gap, all right? And here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think that these arteries are a road, okay? So this is a road like you drive on every single day. This crack is a pothole in the road, all right? And the LDL cholesterol, <coughs> excuse me, the LDL cholesterol is a construction worker. Sorry, I got something in my throat. Anyways, the LDL cholesterol is a construction worker. So what happens is your body is kind of like the city, all right? You with me? Let's just recap. So artery walls are the roads, right? The crack in the artery wall that you produce stress on, which was exercise or lifestyle, whatever, got a pothole in the road, and the construction worker, which is the LDL cholesterol, came out to fix the hole in the road. And your body is the city that said, hey, construction worker, go out there and fix that pothole. All right? That's kind of how that works. But what, all right, how does that, how's that good or bad? Okay, so LDL cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein, is typically what gets the bad rap. That's like the, hey, you're the bad cholesterol, don't eat that, you know, whatever. Okay, well, we've already defined that cholesterol is determined good or bad based on what's in it, because um, they're all the same density lipoproteins, right? Well, that construction worker went out there, okay? But the city didn't get any notifications that that pothole got fixed meaning that your body didn't get any notifications saying, hey, this hole's been fixed. So it continues to send out more LDL. And it packs on that LDL. It sends more construction workers out there to help fix the problem, right? Well, this HDL, your quote-unquote good cholesterol, that's your high-density lipoprotein. What that does, what it's supposed to do, is clear this stuff up, all right? So the real-life analogy would be that all these construction workers are out there, but they don't have a bus to take them home. They need a ride home, right? The city would send a bus to pick these guys up and take them home, but the city never got any notifications that the pothole had been fixed. They didn't send any buses. They thought the city was still, or the construction workers were still working on it. Your body thinks that you're still working on fixing it. So it doesn't send out any HDL. It doesn't send out any of the good cholesterol to come get these and then take them away, all right? And that's how the artery would get open, all right? Well, the bad thing about that is that if this doesn't happen, your body conti continues to send the construction workers out, right? And it builds up and builds up. And this is plaque on the arteries, otherwise known as you could get atherosclerosis or you could get coronary heart disease where too much cholesterol builds up in the arteries. And then you have a heart attack. And a heart attack is your body's way of breaking up that cholesterol and breaking it apart so the blood can flow back through because when, you, when that happens around the heart, there's no way for the heart to generate more oxygen or blood flow to the heart. So that's why that happens, okay? We don't want that to happen, okay? So hopefully I gave you kind of a real life analogy of what that would look like, all right? I'm gonna explain how to fix it, but what you don't want is you don't want too, much construct too many construction workers out there trying to fix a road that's already been fixed. You want the bus to come pick them up and take them away. You want your body to send out the good cholesterol to break down the bad cholesterol so it flows. Great. How do you fix it? Okay, so your bad cholesterol, what typically gets deemed as bad cholesterol and what typically gets good deemed as good cholesterol. This is your LDL. This is your HDL. Like we talked about in the beginning of this video, these are lipoproteins. It's not that the cholesterol is bad. It's what's in the cholesterol. Your body makes cholesterol. It's not gonna make something that kills itself, right? Look, I know this is not the stuff you heard in school. I get it. We're here to give you the right information. When other people are reaching the goals that you wanna reach and you're not, is it that you're uneducated or you just have the wrong information? You've been told the wrong stuff. You've probably been misled. So for example, bad cholesterol, the low density lipoprotein is full of carbs and sugar. That's what's packed in those lipoproteins. Your good cholesterol, your HDL, is packed full of fats, all right? So when you look at that and you say, well, wait a minute, I, need I, don't, I, I don't need any low density lipoprotein. I don't need any LDL. 
Well, actually, yeah, you kind of do um, because it, it builds up your arteries here. And what happens is if you pack that stuff with all the wrong stuff, then you're not going to have enough transportation to take it away. So for example, what are we told? We're told that we need things like the average American eats 60% carbohydrates. We are told that a good breakfast is uh, like a bowl of cereal, orange juice, a banana, muffins, fruit, yogurt. You know, we got to jumpstart a morning is really good breakfast. Bro, you're having 150 grams of sugar is what you're having. And you're having a bunch of carbs and starches and just elevating insulin through the roof and fat storage hormones and bad cholesterol is going to start shooting out. There's nothing wrong with cholesterol. Like, just think of it the other way. What if the city kept sending out buses, but there was no construction workers to pick up? Wouldn't make any sense, right? Like, it, it flows both ways. So you need to make sure that you're packing your body with good enough fats. And it, I, look, I don't care about some good fat, bad fat. I'm talking volumes here. I'm not saying that if you eat bacon, you're going to die and avocado oil, you're going to live. Like that's just ridiculous to think like that. It's not that black and white. What I'm saying is volumes. So if you look at everything that I go over in my book, everything we talk about in nutrition finance is the volumes in which you need to eat. And we look at percentages of carbs, fat, and protein. You know, on average, people do really, really well with 35 to 40% carbohydrates, maybe 50% carbohydrates if they're really trying to put on a bunch of mass. Nobody needs to eat 60% carbohydrates. I mean, unless you're doing something extreme. I'm saying, I'm saying general population does not need to eat 60% carbohydrates, which is what the average American is eating. Then let's look at those carbs. Those 60% carbs are not sweet potatoes and, you know, white potatoes, you know, whatever. Uh, they're not low glycemic index foods. That's 60% carbohydrates of a lot of sugar cookies and snacks and, and fruit roll-ups and Pop-Tarts. And even, even when you don't think that you're eating bad, oh, I made a good decision. I ate, you know, Honey Nut Cheerios. Bro, you ate Honey Nut Cheerios, dude. It's still 75 grams of carbs. It's still 80 grams of, or not 80 grams, but probably 40 grams of sugar. I mean, like, there's just so much. And we really have to pay attention to that. So when you're looking at your nutrition, carbs aren't the devil. You just need to look at sugar as being the devil, right? Like, you don't need to look at it and say, all carbs are bad carbs. All cholesterol is bad cholesterol. I need to lower my cholesterol. You can't just eat less cholesterol. That's not going to happen. Like, eggs aren't the poison. It's the bagel that you eat with it. And looking at the volume of carbohydrates and making sure that you're getting an appropriate percentage of carbohydrates throughout the day. But what you also can't do is you can't say, hey, I'm just going to not eat carbs or I'm not going to eat any sugars and sweets, you know, whatever, or I'm going to take out fat. Like you can't do that. You can't massively take out these nutrients because then you're not going to have anything to fill your good cholesterol. So it's a really good balance. So the point being that you need to understand how cholesterol works. I'm not asking you to be a scientist, but I am saying it's not just cholesterol's bad you know, stop eating cholesterol. Your body makes cholesterol. Your body wouldn't make something that killed itself. There are several different types of cholesterol, all of which are density lipoproteins, which means it's not the cholesterol, it's what's in them that actually matters. What does cholesterol do? Look at your arteries like a road and you're getting bumps in the road. So you're sending out construction workers to fix the problem, but you have to give them a bus to take them home. And that bus and those construction workers are made up of of your bad cholesterol, quote unquote, and your good cholesterol. The way you balance that is appropriate percentages of carbs, fat, and protein. Not overindulging or limiting too much the amounts of carbs, fat, and protein. If you click the link below, there's a link to my book. You can pick that up on Amazon. You can order it and get all started with everything you need. But monitor your cholesterol by looking at it and understanding what it is and really, really figuring out how to manipulate that. All right. So look here, I'm here. I'm Mitchell Black. I'm the founder of Strong Side. I'm the author of Nutrition Finances. I'm here to bring you the right information. I'm here to say that you're not uneducated, but you probably have the wrong information. This is not the stuff you were taught in school. All right, so let's stay together and let's do this. Hey, check it out right now. You can click on the link below to Amazon and get my book, Nutrition Finances. This is the last nutrition book that you will ever need a complete manual to your success, your meal prep, your grocery shopping, and everything you need to reach your fat loss goals and your muscle building gains.